Now, some of you may or may not know this, but recently, I just undertook and completed an 18 month hiatus from the dating scene. So that it, what that means is consciously, I decided to take an 18 month break from women. So no sexual interactions or none of that. I just cut the fucking ties. Now, alongside this, in the last six to eight months of it, last six months, actually, the last six months, excuse me, burping up a bit of ash board. The last six months or six and a half months, because it was 200 days of this hiatus, I also embarked on a 200 day semen retention journey. Now, the difference between taking a break from the dating game and semen retention is, although you might be taking a break from the dating game, you can still, you can still do your own thing. Whereas semen retention is nothing, nada. So you might be asking yourself now, why did you do this, Jake? What on earth compelled you to take such a long break from the dating game, and then secondly, six and a half, six and a half months of full-on semen retention. You're fucking nuts. And you're right, I am fucking nuts. But there was something there. That's for sure. So why take a break from anything? Why? Well, for starters, you might take a break from something because it's no longer serving you or no longer serving the purpose that you needed it for. You might take a break from something because it's causing you harm. Or you might take a break from something just simply to Take a step back and maybe provide yourself with some much needed clarity. In a sense, all those reasons applied to me. And my experience with my sexual urge, my sexual drive, my sexual impulse. See, for most of my life, it was very strong, very strong. I would say so strong that it was to my detriment. So, I took the break to help weaken, to help weaken that compulsion, that sexual compulsion that was running rampant within me. You think of it like this, right? It doesn't have to just be your sexual urge or your, yeah, your sexual urge. It could be any urge or any compulsion that burns deep within you. You think of it like this, every time, so let's use the sexual compulsion, the sexual urge for this example. So every time you engage in that urge, you engage in that compulsion, 
you think of the compulsion like a fire and every time you engage with it, every time you give into it, you're just adding more wood, more fuel to the fire. And what happens when you add wood, when you add fuel to a fire? It goes up in flames, it burns hotter and it burns hotter and it burns hotter. So, why is a break needed? Well, if you want that fire to maybe get a little smaller, maybe come, maybe it's getting a little out of control and you're a, um, a little concerned about it, what it might, concerned about what it might do, you want the fire to come down a little bit. So you take a break, you stop putting wood on it, you stop putting fuel on it, and you take a break. Now, say we've got this big, hot, raging fire, right? We stop putting fuel on it. We stop adding wood to the fire. What happens? Does the fire extinguish immediately? No, it doesn't. Depending on how big and how hot this fire is burning, depending on how big and how hot this fire is burning, will determine on how long... Oh, fuck, I need to turn my notifications off when I'm doing these videos because it's quite distracting. Fucking Padgy. Fuck. Yes, yeah, so depending on how big and how hot the fire is burning will determine on how long it takes for the fire to become fully extinguished. Now, if you've got a big, raging, roaring motherfucker, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while for it to come down. If your fire is medium-sized, it's burning quite hot, but it's not out of control. It's still going to take some time, but it'll be a little quicker. And likewise, if you've just got a little flickering black fallow fire, it might, it's still going to take some time to extinguish, but again, much quicker. So, given that my fire, my sexual urge or impulse was, it was burning quite hot. It was quite an impressive fire, as far as fires go. So, there was a certain amount of time I felt that was needed to let it come down a little bit, right? I'm not trying to put that bastard out, but I want it to come down because it, it's getting up to the trees and other things that we don't want that. We want, I just wanted to contain it a little bit. Just wanted to bring it down a little bit. And 200 days seemed like an appropriate time frame for me. It did. So, I'm going to stick with this fire analogy because it's good. I think you can... You know fires. You know fires. You've seen a fire before. Fires are good. A little campfire. Put your marshmallows on it. Don't put a marshmallow on this fire, though. It's not... Um, so, the actual experience itself. I'm sure you're interested to hear what it was like. Now you know why. Now I'm sure you want to hear the how. What happened. So, first one to two weeks, real hard. That fire was burning hot. And it's just like anything. I'm sure if you've quit uh, an, addict an addiction, you know the first bit is the hardest. It's always the hardest. Because, why? Because the fire is still burning fucking hot. There's still considerable fuel there to keep that. So the first one to two weeks was the hardest. And then it got a little easier, but up until around 40 days, fuck off, Padgy. You are annoying. You are disrupting my videos. Uh, I'll put airplane mode on because I can still film whilst on airplane mode. Problem solved. So, where was I? So the first one to two weeks was the hardest. It got a little bit easier, but still up until around 40 to 50 days, it was hard. I just wanted to fucking 
Shut me bedroom door. Grab a roll of toilet paper and fucking go to town, mate. But I didn't. A little bit of self-control, a little bit of discipline. It might be worthwhile pointing out that I didn't enter into this 200 days immediately. I'd done a month, 40 days, a few months here and there beforehand leading up to it. So I had a little bit of experience. So the first 40 days were the hardest. And then around day, around 50 to 60 days, I remember it just became a lot easier. It's like, you know, with a fire, it's burning and there's flames that are extending above the fire. And then all of a sudden, it just drops and the coals are still burning hot and there's still little flickers above the pieces of wood in there. But that extension of flames has dropped. It's sort of like that. The flames had dropped. The fire was still there, but it dropped. And from, yeah, around 60 days onwards, it became very easy. I was... I noticed that in my interactions with women, in my, in the times I went out into public, instead of looking at women like, oh boy, I'd love to. Instead of having that mindset, I was able to Look at the world through a clearer lens. See, when I say clearer lens, my mind and the lens through which I was viewing the world, through which I view the world, was not all muddied and dirtied by my hormones. I had, in essence, taken a little bit of control over them, taken a little bit of my power back, and as a result, I was seeing the world much, much clearer. And I'm sure you can relate too. We've all been in that situation where we've been horny, very horny, and we might not make the best decisions just because our mind is muddied by our hormones they are burning strong they are raging fucking hot and we're not we're not acting with a lot of clarity if I do say and then from 60 days onwards that was real it was like 60 to 90 days it was like that month was like it was like oh, I feel like a kid again my mind's not hijacked by hormones like was still there, don't get me wrong, but the clarity I had, it was like, it was cool. And then from around 100 days to, you know, 90 days to around 170 days, I'm going to say, that sort of two-month period, it ebbed and flowed. It came in waves, super horny, to just, just cruising, just chilling, so super horny. So, hmm. That was nice. And then from, I would say, the last month, and this is the reason, this year what I'm about to tell you is the reason why I actually called it the 200 days. I was considering a year and a year and a half. I called it the 200 days because of this. And the reason was the last month, man, as I said, it came in waves leading up to that, but the last month was just like, Just like fucking laser, f I could not stop thinking about sex. I was just like fucking. I would see something like this tea mug and go, oh fuck, baby, I'd love to do some dirty things to you. Four. <laughs> no, but you get it. You get it. So the last 30 days was pretty intense and you know what maybe it was like that final barrier I needed to push through and then I would just like explode into like enlightenment or who knows but I took it as a sign I thought maybe this is a sign to just 
give it a rest, end the experiment. So I did 200 days, marked the completion of my relationship with the same intention. And now, maybe it's been two months. No, it's been about three or four months now. Fuck, time flies. And I'm sure if you've gotten this far, congrats. But I'm sure if you've gotten this far, you're probably wondering, hmm. There's a little ash cord. I'm sure if you've gotten this far, you're probably wondering, hmm. What's it? Nah, I'm making a video. I grab her. The respect. Quick, get the cameras on. Quick. Oh, Jessie loves walking. Bring her in on the camera real quickly. She's going for a walk. Oh, Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Okay, see you now. Please shut the door. <laughs> Anyhow. Now, I'm sure you're wondering if you made it this far, what's it like? What's it like after? Well, I'll tell you what it's like. It's fucking liberating, mate. It's empowering. I feel strong. I feel in control. It's by far one of the best decisions I ever made with my life. I can't get over how empowering it is taking control of your life, getting your life back from your compulsions. You see, the nature of a compulsion is you continually engage with it. And in doing so, you think you're exercising your free will. You think, I'm a free man by doing this, but really you're a fucking slave. You're a fucking slave to your compulsions. And that's that. So, as you can imagine, for any slave getting their freedom back, it's fucking good feeling. It's pretty empowering. So that's me. I've got my freedom back. I feel strong. I feel good. I also have noticed that, especially in the last half of that period, women started responding to me differently in a much more positive way. They were, became, not to say they weren't engaged or interested beforehand, but I feel as though I've noticed a slight peaking of their interest. It's just been lifted a little bit. It's very subtle, but it's something I've noticed and maybe they can just smell the semen oozing out of me or... <laughs> Sorry, that's vulgar. That is vulgar as fuck. Um, or maybe I just act a little differently and some women pick up on that. Who knows? But I've noticed there's a slight change in their interest <clears throat> and now also I like yeah I might fucking jerk off here and there but it's like once a week sometimes I just forget you know like I'll go a month and just like whatever I'll like fucking who cares it's not that big of a thing anymore um, we're in the past oh, I'd see a hog here like, oh, I wait to fucking get wank over that Too funny, too funny. It's, you know, this problem, this sexual compulsion, I know with men, I don't discuss this in, as much with women, but I know with men it's real. I tell some mates 200 days no wanking and they're just fucking flummoxed. Absolutely flummoxed, mate. They're like, well, I think a lot of them would rather die than have to endure that. You know, I'm talking to blokes that are like, jerking off two, three plus times a day. I just don't know how the fuck y'all do it, you know? Um, it's so, every time that you shoot your load, you're depleting yourself, yeah, because semen is a powerful fucking, powerful fucking ingredient, right? It's It makes fucking life. That is no small feat. That's fucking powerful. It's full of minerals, all that sort of stuff. So every time you're shooting that out, your body's got to make some more. Your body's got to make some more. And that, takes a bit of energy, takes a bit of work. 
and it fucking depletes you. I tell you, you won't you won't realize this because you're just jerking off every fucking day. <laughs> you won't realize this until you take a little break. But every time you chew a load, it's like, <sighs> and you sort of feel that it it persists, not just for the first hour afterwards, but it persists. And if there's been a handful of occasions where I've gone, you say like Monday, Tuesday, back to back. And the second one just hits me like a truck. I'm just like, uh, uh, like, but I can feel it throughout my day, right? I just feel softened, weakened, depleted. So, oh. it's been a bit of a long video. If you've made it this far, thank you. <sighs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a little bit out of it. Fuck, I feel like no. I feel like if it even compels or inspires, I should say, inspires a much better word. If it even inspires 1% of the people who watch this to maybe partaking in cutting the ties with one of their compulsions, it may not be. Your sexual fire may not be that big. You might be drugs. You might be Netflix. You might be gaslighting. Who knows, mate? Fucking no. Who cares? But if you take a little break from it, see, cunt, if you, ta if you take a little break from it, it's going to be good. It's going to be fucking good for you. If you take a sufficient enough break from it, I fucking guarantee you, guarantee you it will be one of the best things you've ever done so with that being said thank you for watching <laughs>